I understand the standards at UConn basketball, and I'm excited to, uh, you know, get back to building this thing into the championship program that everyone here deserves. It's been over a year since the Huskies hired Dan Hurley to be their new head coach. And in his first full season, UConn saw some highs of their early non-conference success and some lows of an injury-plagued American conference schedule. But through it all, Coach Hurley kept developing a new culture in stores. Acting like champions before we become champions. There's nothing that's minor. Everything is, is critical, uh, you know, because it's all about character. Tonight, we look back on a trying season for the Huskies and look ahead to a promising future. It's the UConn Men's Season Review Show presented by Connecticut Lighting Centers, and it begins now. show brought to you by Connecticut Lighting Centers. I'm Janae Coakley. He is Vin Parisi. We will be joined by former UConn star Scott Burrell later in the show and we will have an exclusive sit down with head coach Dan Hurley as he reviews his first season in stores plus what he is looking for in season two. But Vin, let's begin with this past season. UConn with their third straight losing season. That's the first time that's happened in 30 years. What was your biggest takeaway from the season? Well, you mentioned the past, what Dan Hurley had to inherit. But think about this. This is a program that had eight games the last year under Kevin Ollie to where they lost by 20 points or more. And you look at this season, just under 500 overall, but the culture was changed. This team is known for their aggressive defensive play. They play hard. They get after it. There was a spike in attendance this year. I think the fan base has bought into the optimism. But listen, they battled a lot of injuries this year. And I truly believe that if Jalen Adams and Al Tariq Gilbert did not get hurt, this team would have won 18 to 19 games, Janae, probably be in the mix for an NIT bid, but it was more about changing, changing the culture and the foundation for a good start. And, and he laid that foundation. Yeah. I mean, head coach Dan Hurley saw year one end with a UConn 39-point loss in the ACC tournament to Houston. But his season truly ended when he sat down with me to look back on this new experience. Whirlwind is like way overused term, but um, it went by so fast. You know, you almost feel like it was yesterday. Uh, I was kind of in here doing the press conference, getting announced as the coach. There's just um, there's so many things coming at coming your way, and in, in, in like that transition year, that first year of uh, you know of, of rebuilding a program from you know recruiting to hiring staff to you know addressing and working on your culture to just kind of getting every aspect of the program up to the level that it needs to be at, um, you know, before you have all of the talent that you need to win. So it's just, uh, you know, it's a process that just flies by in the first year of Zoom by. You talked about culture, culture, culture. You're building a culture. Were you able to lay the foundation of that culture that you wanted this year? Yeah, I think you could see the beginning of it. When you see players in the gym uh, every day, when you see the work ethic changing, when you see the grades improving, when you see the relationships between players on and off the court uh, getting closer, building those bonds, that brotherhood, um, you know, the, the preparation becoming better for, uh, you know, leading up to, to games in terms of preparing for opponents. Uh, those are the things that you've got to lay the groundwork with, uh, groundwork with that first year responsibility, accountability, acting like champions before we become champions. Uh, you know, it's, it's a daily battle because you're fighting over every aspect uh, of everything that they do. Are you five minutes early for everything? It's, uh, you know, every, there's nothing that's minor. Everything is, is critical, uh, you know, because it's all about character. When you look at your roster this year, who made the most improvement? And what did you like from the kids? Yeah, well, I mean, everyone's offensive numbers um, were, were better than they've, they, they've been in their career here. Jalen, before he got hurt um, in the Temple game, was, was, from an efficiency standpoint, was better across the board. Christian Vital. Um, you know, his, his field goal percentage was significantly higher. His three-point percentage was significantly higher. It was great improvement for Altari to, to be able to play almost a full season. That was real progress for him. Tyler Polly flashed signs of being a, a real weapon for us as a shooter and an offensive player. 
Sid Wilson had moments. When you're in the third year at a place like this that's experienced nothing but championships on both sides, when you're, uh, it's funny to talk about a lot of positives when you've just finished your third straight losing season. Uh, but sometimes, you know, the, 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 the progress of young players and older players make an improvement, you know, gets skewed a little bit when a place like this is, uh, is struggling the way we have. Okay, then, so let's take a look at the improvement that UConn made this year over the previous season. The Huskies only had an improvement of two more victories over last year, but the biggest difference was offensively, as UConn scored more per game while shooting at a higher percentage. So, Vin, evaluate how Dan Hurley did. He likes to play that quicker offense, and he kind of said that. Yeah, I think he got the most out of this team and for the personnel that he had this season. Because when you look at the fact that his best player, Jalen Adams, missed eight games and they were only one and seven in the games that he was out, you realize the hand that he was dealt. But the players got better. Guys improved. He's not as big as he would like and he's not as deep as he would like. He would like to pressure a little bit more. But he got the most out of this crew. They got a big non-conference win versus Syracuse at Madison Square Garden. They love the energy. They love the way and the style that he wants to play. And I think that's a good foundation moving forward. And you talked about it. There's optimism going forward. This was a massive rebuilding job that Dan Hurley has. And you saw these guys compete. How hard is that for him to do that? Listen, uh, we said it at the start of the season, Janae, is that usually when you have a major, major rebuilding job, with all of this controversy that Dan Hurley encountered, it's usually mass exodus. There's transfers, guys leaving, you're starting from scratch. All of these guys stayed intact, and that's because they believed in his vision from the day of his press conference. Pretty impressive. All right, we are just getting started here. Jalen Adams' UConn career began with a shot for the ages. We look back at the career for one of the most prolific guards in school history. We'll be right back. UConn Men's Season in Review is presented by Connecticut Lighting Centers and Restoration Lighting Gallery. So much more than just a lighting store. A consensus top 30 recruit. Tell us about Adam. Well, Kevin Ali says he's a combination of Shabazz Napier and Ryan Boltwright. Jalen Adams off the turnover, attacking the 10, and man, is he smooth in the pocket. Jalen Adams attacks the basket. It's only a freshman. They really are high on him. He's going to be a fabulous player. This one's good if it goes. Hallelujah! Are you kidding me? Oh man! Killer crossover, and he buries it. Adams! Wow! Another steal, putting it up at the rim. Jalen Adams from Christian Patel. That's a highlight. And despite the lack of major postseason success, it's been an impressive career for Jalen Adams at UConn. He ranked in the top 10 in points, assists, and steals all time at the school. Following his final game, the AAC quarterfinal loss to Houston, Adams spoke about what this past year was like. I think my senior season uh, has been probably my biggest season for me uh, mentally. Um, I think since coaches got here he's pushed me to to limits I haven't been pushed before and I think that's why I've probably had my best season since I've been in college basketball um so appreciate you <laughs> all right Ben how do you view Adams four years at stores I think Jalen Adams uh Janae was a terrific college basketball player for UConn men's basketball but I think it's also marred with very, very bad timing over the course of his career. Now, you got to remember, he came in with very, very high expectations because UConn had gone from the iconic Kemba Walker years into the legendary Shabazz Napier years, and he had to fill those shoes. And when you look at the fact that he battled injury, he battled suspensions, he battled a major, major coaching change. And to give the kid credit, because 1,700 points in a career speaks for itself. He's a talent. He never got that supporting cast that Kemba, Shabazz, and those previous classes did. So terrific player, tough timing. What does that say about what type of leader he was? 
Yeah, see, I, I believe that Jalen Adams will have a chance to play basketball in the future. I don't know, don't think he's going to be a first-round NBA draft pick. Maybe it's second round, maybe it's G League, maybe it's Europe, maybe it's his way. He'll have a chance to play uh, at the next level, whether it's training camp or summer league. But here's the thing. They're going to like him from a, uh, a person standpoint, from a personality standpoint, because he completely bought in in a very difficult position with Dan Hurley. Here he's under the Kevin Ali regime. Would have been very easy for him to jump shot and have a major, major culture change. And Dan Hurley talks about the way that kid worked hard and bought in. I think character is a big thing when people evaluate you for the next level. And as he said, had his best year under Dan Hurley. Absolutely. Senior year. All right, coming up, UConn star Scott Burrell joined the Huskies of Honor earlier this season. And after the break, he joined us in studio to take a look back on that night in this past UConn season. Look at that guy right there. Well, welcome back. Scott Burrell was a star guard for the Huskies in the early 90s. He was the first player under Jim Calhoun to be drafted in the top 20 of the NBA draft. And Burrell was also named to the All-Century UConn team back in 2001. And joining me now is the UConn legend himself, head coach at Southern Connecticut State University, Scott Burrell. Thanks so much for joining me, Scott. Janae, thanks for having me. I'm, it's great, great to be here. All right. Earlier this season, you were finally inducted into the Husky Ring of Honor. Yes. What was that like for you? Uh, it, it was it was a great thrill, a great honor uh, to be put up on the wall with some of the great names that, are, that have been included in UConn basketball history. Um, but I, I think the most important thing for me was be able to have my family, my mom and dad, you, uh, our two kids to be there. And uh, I think that to, 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 to let them see that it was the most excitement and joy that I think I got out of the whole thing. Well, also that day when you were inducted, you played UConn yes. in an exhibition game. What did you see from Dan Hurley's team? A, a tenacious team, um, a team that has his demeanor, his passion, his competitiveness. Uh, they came out and they took it right to us. I mean, uh, they attacked us defensively and uh, they were aggressive. And I think that's the way he coaches. He's a tenacious a competitor and uh, he wants those guys to go out there and compete like that. You watch a lot of UConn because you bleed UConn. Yeah. What did you see from that game early on the season to the one from the final game? Did you see growth? I saw growth, but I think if we saw a healthy team, we'd have saw more growth. I mean, with their guards being out a lot of times with injuries, well, it, it hurt their chances of getting better and getting more repetition. Uh, as, a, as, a, as a unit out there. So I think once they get healthier for next year and, and with the addition of new players, they're going to be a really, really tough team. How would you evaluate how Dan Hurley has done with this team so far? I think Dan has done a great job. I mean, they finished under 500, but with all their injuries and taking over a new team, I think Dan hasn't put his stamp on the team yet. And uh, I think once he that does that, he's going to get some great athletes in there. He's the type of guy who likes to play up-tempo, attack on defense, uh, uh, play a lot of switching defenses. Um, I think once he gets those guys in there that he likes to, the, the, that play like, it, like he wants them to play, they're going to be really, really tough in the future. You talk about how hard is that to get a guy because he needs his leader. He needs someone to put a stamp on it. Can Al Al-Tariq Gilbert do that? I think Alteric, once he's healthy, I think he can. I think uh, his first job is to get healthy. And uh, hopefully his last year he'll be healthy and gets, uh, gets a lot of playing time out there and, and stays that way. But I think also um, Josh Carlton. Josh Carlton's a guy that uh, Kenyon Hunter has really been working with. And uh, he's a big guy that can, that's improved from the beginning of the season. I hope he continues that and to look for big things from him next year. What do you want to see from this UConn team in the future? Just get improve, improve every year. Um, I think Dan's going to do that. I think, uh, I think in their third year you're going to see a special team. And uh, they're, they're going to rise up to the AAC and be a, a team that's going to be reckoned with for in the future. They're going to get, bring it back to where they were. All right, one last question. I know you've done a lot of interviews in your years. Mm -hmm. Was this one your toughest? I mean, being yeah, a wife I mean, and all? Being, it's, it's a special one. It's one of my most special. <laughs> being, being able to do, to do it with you, it's very special. All right, you have money to pick up the, pay the babysitter, right? I paid yesterday. Okay. <laughs> you, got it. you got it today. All right, a new crop of freshmen are headed up to stores. What can they bring to the Huskies next season as they try to return to prominence? Head coach Dan Hurley tells us right after the break. Welcome back. UConn is Dan Hurley's third stop in his head coaching career. At his previous two stops, he saw big leaps from year one to year two. Could he see something similar coming at U UConn? If it does happen, a highly touted recruiting class could be behind the improvement. In part two of our sit down with the coach, I asked him what has him most excited about the incoming freshman. Yeah, it's exciting because I, I just think it's, um, you know, they, they represent like a skill set or or an athleticism or, or a talent level on the court that just that reminds you of recruiting classes um, 
that kind of helped get this program where it's been, you know, the last 25 years. So, you know, with, with, with James, uh, you know, Book Knight, you know, the athleticism, the, the great size for his position, you know, the you know the, the, the three-point shooting with, with deep range. It's, you know, he's such an effortless talent, um, you know, that, that he's just got you look at, and that's the type of guy that used to start at the two in this program when they were winning championships. Uh, you know, Jalen Gaffney, another one, as a point guard, incredible size, shooting. He's got every, you know, skill that, that you could possibly want out of a point guard in today's game. Um, it's just a matter about acclimating the college, getting stronger, getting experience. Uh, when those two guys uh, gain experience and understand what it takes to win at the college level, um, they, they'll be as electrifying a backcourt as I think you'll see in college basketball at some point. You know, and then a Cooker Cook, he's been with us. Uh, you know, he's your new age uh, basketball, kind of positionless, 6'9", talented athlete, tremendous length, one of the better uh, rim protectors in terms of his defense that I've seen in college. His, his, his timing on blocking shots is, is uncanny. And uh, to go along with that, he brings incredible athleticism, three-point shooting. So he's kind of your like new age four-man uh, stretch four that everyone's so desperate to have. What do you want to see for next season? I just want to see uh, uh, an even harder playing team, uh, uh, you know, even more of a brotherhood. You know, it's like you want to see locker rooms after tough losses where you know, where, where, where there's real raw emotion. You know, you want to have, you know, a locker room at the end of the season where, like, no one can leave the locker room because we're hugging and crying and can't believe that we don't get to play another game together. Like, that's the culture and, and, and the love between player and coach, player to player, you know, that, that you need to have in, in, your, in your program. You want to continue to have exciting young players that are progressing and growing and flashing uh, a great future for us, taking the court and, and showing improvement throughout the course of the year. Uh, we we want to win more. I think I've had one season in my nine years as a head coach where we didn't win more games the next year than we did the year before. So uh, we want to just move this thing forward. I obviously have a really good understanding after being here a year, just how far we have to go to get it back anywhere near where this thing once was. But um, you know, it's about uh, being young and hungry and talented and now just going through the process that you have to go through to learn how to win. Finn, you just heard Dan's excitement about this incoming freshman class. What can they do to help transform this team? This is the Hurley game plan, folks, what's taking place right now, and it's got to make you excited if you're a Husky fan because within three to four years, he changed the face of Rhode Island basketball, and it started in the first 10 to 11 months with the first recruiting class. All three of these guys, Book Knight, Gaffney, and a cook are top 100 players, all three of them. This is a top 20 recruiting class. Some high have it as high as 18th in the country. This is going to be a dynamic point guard, uh, a backcourt, excuse me, for the future, which most recruiting experts agree. He's added a rim protector with some size, which plays into the pressure defense. He likes to play. Little by little, you're starting to see the parts come together. Got a lot of athletes in there, a yes. lot of guys that are quick, strong demons. Yep. All right, beyond the freshman, what player is key for UConn next season? Uh, I'm going to, you know, give it a quartet almost. It's that core of that sophomore class, guys that are going to be juniors next year, and then the freshman who he needs to develop, whether you want to talk about a Brandon Adams. But I think, think about who's coming back. It's the Al Tariq Gilberts. It's the Tyler Pollies. It's the Josh Carltons, Sidney Wilsons. Guys that were able to compliment Gilbert and the guards, because obviously as a redshirt junior, he's got them for two more. Christian Vital, all these guys have to have another big offseason. Janae, you talked to other coaches within the league, and they said the job that he did with a Josh Carlton get some more bigs up front, but these guys got better and improved. In the past, you didn't see guys' games take a jump during the season. It did under the Hurley era with his coaching staff. You're talking about all these names. You're talking about can El Tariq Gilbert, or is there a guy who can be the leader? Who is going to be the team leader next year? I think that still remains to be, you know, seen. I, I think that people need to be realistic that as good as this recruiting class comes in, when they come in next year, they're going to be young, and they're going to be freshmen. And I think it will be an El Tariq Gilbert, a guy that has multiple years under him, and most importantly, time under the Dan Hurley regime to pass those little nuggets of advice on to the younger crew.
All right. Well, we are not done just yet. We are going to look ahead to year two of Coach Hurley's tenure. And what are some reasonable expectations? Stay with us. Been dropping some nuggets for us. Mm. UConn Men's Season in Review is presented by Connecticut Lighting Centers and Restoration Lighting Gallery. So much more than just a lighting store. I find myself in practice some days yelling up at Ray, yelling up at Kemba. Hey, fellas, we, we got to do better than this. We can't make those types of mistakes. So it's like, it, it's... Um, it's one of those things where we all have to know where we are and the level that we have to uh, work to work at every day to get this thing back. Players, we all have to do more. We have to be more committed. Um, you know, we've got to build this thing back from the ground up, back to the elite level of college basketball. Um, but it's a fun journey. The, the climb is incredibly exciting. And just seeing those banners and those players gives you great hope again because you know it, it was done here before. Uh, and we'll do it again. The great thing about Dan is he understands the history of UConn. So yeah. what are like reasonable expectations for next season? Well, I'm going to compare it once again to, you know, the powerhouse that he built in the Atlantic 10 at University of Rhode, Rhode Island. And the reality is, is that, yes, he had veterans this year, but they were veterans he inherited. And he had to make the best of the season. Sometimes it gets a little worse before it gets better in year two because you're relying on so many freshmen and sophomores to step up for you. It's going to depend on how the freshmen produce. Could it be 18, 19 wins NIT? Who knows? But I do know this. The foundation is there for this thing to turn in year three or four. And what he did this year was impressive. Yes. And, and like I said. Culture changed. And that's what he 100%. needed to do. And it's not that easy. No. Because this wasn't his team. No, absolutely. Well, Vin, as always, it's fantastic. Love working with you. Great year. <laughs> All right. Well, that will do it for the UConn Men's Season Review Show. For this guy, Vin Parisi, I'm Jay Coakley. It did go too fast. Thanks for joining us, and we will see you next season when Huskies basketball returns to SNY. Got to be excited, though. Dan's got to be excited. It'll be here before UConn you know fans it. have to be excited. Can't wait for November. They do. They do. I mean, UConn fans have to be excited.